Hello, I'm Tim Hellman. And I'm Jake Tenpass. And this is Movie Talk. Today we're going to review the movie Django Unchained. It's Quentin Tarantino's new homage to spaghetti westerns. And it's set during the pre-Civil War South. And it's about a bounty hunter who tracks down a slave named Django. He's played by Jamie Foxx and he wants him to help him track down his current bounty because he's the only one that knows what they look like. So he helps him do that and he agrees to set him free. Then he makes another deal with him to become his partner and he'll help him find his wife, Brumhilda. She's been sold into slavery at a different plantation. At a plantation owned by Calvin Candy and he's played by Leonardo DiCaprio. He's a guy who fights slaves against each other. It is also a place where white southern gentlemen can come and avail themselves of attractive black female okay. slaves. Mm -hmm. The bounty hunter, of course, is played by uh, Christoph, Christoph Waltz. Waltz. Yeah. Yeah, so that's worth mentioning. Uh, I think it's super worth mentioning because... He's up for an Oscar for one thing. He's, he's delightful. <laughs> yeah. Christoph Waltz is delightful. Oh, yeah. The two Tarantino movies he's been in, he's delightful he's in both movies. I mean, if you can play a... Nazi and be delightful. <laughs> like that's uh, pretty much about as big of an oxymoron uh -huh. as you can get. A delightful Nazi. The one thing that I'll say about Django Unchained that was incredibly satisfying for me is I grew up listening to Public Enemy. I grew up listening to a lot of like political rap music and as a young white kid with a lot of like white guilt who felt bad about the history of our country I feel like Tarantino gets that in mm -hmm. a way that like not a lot of directors do, and it was so satisfying to watch. The first time Django grabs that bullwhip and just whips the hell oh, out yeah. of that slave owner, it was so satisfying to me. On and the, ma the major shootout in the house was amazing, I thought. Really, really <laughs> well done. So satisfying as a viewer, I thought. Which it's kind of this like it's like this wish fulfillment. It's uh -huh. like you've always you've mm -hmm. always wanted to see that movie uh, that's like a revenge movie where mm -hmm. a slave's getting revenge on the people that have have ruined his life. Mm -hmm. And this movie was was that for mm -hmm. me in so many ways. I feel like Tarantino is pretty self indulgent, <laughs> and at the same time. I can't begrudge him it no. because I I find him because I think everyone else enjoys it still. <laughs> yeah, he's so endlessly entertaining. Uh, so what do you think about the criticisms of it being exploitative? Well, I'll tell you. Huh. I read one piece that I thought was pretty spot on when it said that a lot of portrayals of slavery that are more dignified or less exploitive uh, oftentimes don't show the horrors of slavery. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you want to call this movie exploitive, you also have to admit the most truly shocking, troubling scenes in the movie were the scenes involving slaves being mistreated. So I thought they were done really well. I it, de it definitely made the movie very disturbing. Absolutely. <laughs> there's, <laughs> a, be. The, there's a scene where a, a slave gets ripped apart by dogs. Uh -huh. That's probably the most disturbing scene in the movie. And in fact, uh, not to give anything away, but that scene, a character who's seen a lot of violence sees that happen and it's like a switch flips and mm -hmm. something changes in that person and I mean I think it's a testament to the fact that throughout the movie you see a lot of violence but not all violence is created equal some violence in the movie is portrayed almost like Kill Bill in mm -hmm. that there's crazy blood splashing everywhere mm -hmm. and it takes on an almost cartoonish <laughs> bent yeah. and then there are other scenes where much less is shown much less blood is shown there's almost no but gore it's a lot more disturbing, but it's a lot more disturbing. Mm -hmm. which to me is great because I think the whole argument against violence in movies movies a lot of times is stupid because the truth of the matter is that the idea of violence and who the violence is against or how the violence is perpetrated is oftentimes more disturbing than seeing stage blood. I thought he did a really good job with it and yeah. I, I don't know. It's like we've said before, I've watched tons and you have to tons and tons of violent movies and I rarely ever have a violent urge. Well and it's certainly <laughs> a pertinent argument in recent times mm -hmm. and this isn't about how I feel about gun control, I don't even want to get into that. Yeah. Don't try and say that violence on screen is somehow more responsible for real world violence than guns are. I'm not saying one or the other is responsible. I'm saying, you know, people need to take responsibility for the bat for the evil that they do. And I have a really gut reaction when anybody says, Oh, it's Hollywood's fault. Like that's such a well, lazy been argument to me. Proven by like, you know, how Japan has so many violent movies and video games and their real life violence is almost non existent. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how do you explain that? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's mm -hmm. it's something completely separate and mm -hmm. it's it's just Hollywood is an easy scapegoat mm -hmm. and that's all it comes down to. Um, but certainly I think uh, just to look over their argument instead of 
Yeah. Yeah. Instead of blaming misdirection. Uh, yeah. Yeah, among many other things I liked about Django Unchained, I think it's an interesting commentary on violence in cinema and, mm -hmm. and how it can make you feel and what it can, what it means. So mm -hmm. anyway, I, I definitely enjoyed that aspect of the movie. Have you heard what Spike Lee said about it? I've heard a little bit of what Spike Lee uh, said about it. He hadn't even seen it as one thing. I don't know. I have a love-hate relationship <laughs> with Spike Lee. I mean, I, some of his movies are some of my favorite movies and at the same time some of the things he says are so complete I mean it's almost like Ann Coulter like Spike <laughs> Lee sometimes almost mm -hmm. sounds like her just saying something that you can't even believe that he believes but he's, mm -hmm. but he's just saying it to get attention or to mm -hmm. get a rise out of people I mm -hmm. think he does that I, just like I think Ann Coulter does it, just like I think a lot of people do, and mm -hmm. I don't really have a lot of respect for that. Let's have a good dialogue, uh, let's have a good intelligent dialogue, let's not just say things to uh, elicit strong emotions. That's a that's a cop-out way. So what rating would you give it then? I'm gonna go four stars on it, I think. Just four? I, you know, I think it could have been trimmed a little bit. I don't think it was a perfect movie for my take, I mean... Not even a 4.5? <laughs> I might, I mean, I might be willing to go 4.5, <laughs> but you know, I mean, I really feel like I'd like to see Tarantino take everything that's great about his directing and make a compact, really perfect movie where you feel like not a second could have been cut. For me at least, because I love Tarantino so much, I might be a little bit, I might give him a slightly lower star rating than somebody else because it's like, I just expect so damn much yeah. of him. I give him five stars. Okay. If you like watching Slave Masters <laughs> get the crap beat out of them, go see Django Unchained. It's incredibly satisfying. Yes, yeah. There are absolutely few directors that I get as excited about when I find out that they're coming out with a new movie as Tarantino. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like Quentin Tarantino, Wes Anderson, P.T. Anderson, Nicholas Winding Refn. Uh, you know, there's just this handful of directors that I just, I hear their name associated with a movie. Darren Aronofsky, I hear their name associated with a like movie. Tarantino, Kevin Smith. James Cameron and David Fincher. And I really like those guys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those are my top favorites. But I definitely like all the guys you said, too. I think David Fincher's <laughs> got a career arc that goes, mm. <laughs> What?